Hi, uh, this is part two about collecting bags and Lulu is here to talk about um, her, her special bag collection and if you haven't seen part one um, you'll find it but this is a continuation of part one. Okay. Hi, it's me again, Lulu. Um, I forgot actually to talk about um, one last clutch that I got. Um, again, like when I was talking about earlier, if you're spending less money, um, you want to go for the classic shapes and the classic um, colors. Um, and, but in addition to that, I mean, you can also, sorry, if you're spending more money, you can go for the classic colors and the classic shapes. But, um, again, it, you know, you'll often find things that if you want to go for different, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be color, but for this, I mean, like this is a patent leather sink skin clutch that I found for $10 in New York. Um, again, this is one thing that sort of, um, if it was sort of, I actually would have paid more for this bag just because I thought it was such a nice piece mm. in it. I think if this sort of lasted for quite a while, but um, I mean, mainly this one caught my eye because I mean, obviously, I mean, it's such a beautiful little handbag and it doesn't fit very much, and you're you're not going to use it very often, which is why I think if you were to spend a lot of money on it, um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. But you know, for ten dollars, a clutch like this, you know, just sort of like patent leather snake skin, it just works really well as part mm -hmm. of any collection. And again, this is like literally scouring the city for, for deals. And um, I don't leave any um, discount bin unrummaged through. Mm -hmm. And um, and this this is one that sort of popped up in that whole, um, you know, my, my search for the deal. Are there any particular vintage shops that you really like in um, New York? Well, I'm, well in New York, it, they're sort of all over the place. I mean, the ones in Soho are really, really quite lovely. Mm -hmm. um, I think like the Lower East Side actually is a great place to get really good vintage because mm -hmm. um, there's there's still classic shops that aren't um, vintage is very tough because a lot of times you go to like really nice vintage shops and you'll find um, really overly priced things. I think we're just talking about this. It's I mean I think if you're not really a fashion historian, I mean like I know some fashion history, but like I don't know enough um, to really look through the little vintage shops. And so I think when you go to the bigger vintage shops, I mean, you're going to pay pretty much the same. A friend of mine just picked up a Chanel, um, a vintage Chanel bag and it was $1,200. <clears throat> a new one would have probably been about 2000. So she wasn't really saving that much money and it was, you know, sort of a vintage piece. So actually quite, I mean, buying vintage is really difficult if you're not reading up on it. So that's mm. something that to keep in mind when you're when you're looking I at want vintage pieces. <laughs> Actually, can I borrow it? Yes, of course. Mm, well, of course. Mm. Um, one other sort of crown in my vintage jewel is is this handbag. Mm. Um, I just thought, you know, no one does cut velvet anymore. And again, I think when you're looking through vintage, you have to kind of find pieces that you know people don't do, and it's very hard to mass produce. Um, mm. And cut velvet is so difficult to do. And I think this one, I probably picked up for $30. It was in Vancouver. Um, this is probably another 10 years old. So I, I mean, I haven't lived in Vancouver for about 10 years and I probably got it before then. So it's probably like 12 years old, this bag for me. I and mean, then I've owned it for 12 years and it was older than that beforehand. Again, um, vintage is a great way to, um, like people just don't make bags the way they used to. So that you're looking to kind of find things like cut velvet or, you know, um, snakeskin embroidery it's really great to kind of start off with a vintage shop because I think that's where you're going to find that craftsmanship that just doesn't exist anymore and they didn't do it for very high prices back in the old days so I think it's just something that um to consider when you're looking for a really good piece that's sort of um got good craftsmanship so the last thing I want to talk about is statement bags. And everybody knows which ones these, these are. This is sort of like the Steven Spruce bags for Louis Vuitton. Um, I'm sort of of the mindset that, you know, if it's a it's sort of like a flashy, trendy bag, um, you probably are going to wear it for one season, but you have to collect these pieces that you know you're going to love for the rest of your life. And for me, I just was really into the Dior saddlebag sort of early 90s phase and um, I was one I think I flew actually I made Patrick get me this bag from my friend Patrick Patrick's in the room next in the room door next in the living us. room because we're kind of hanging out and having a bit <laughs> I, of a party exactly <laughs> but I paid for this bag and um, I made him bring it over. He was living in Boston at the time, and it wasn't available in Canada. And I remember when I got it, and I and I first used it in Toronto, where I was living at the time. 
it just, I mean, people were stopping me on the street. And, like, I don't wear this bag very often anymore. But when I look at it, it just makes me happy because it was just sort of, it just captured that early 90s, very, you know, I mean, at the time, like, Sarah Jessica Parker in Sex and the City was wearing the saddlebags all the time. And I just I really wanted to own a piece of that. And I knew this was going to be sort of, like, a, a piece that you just looked at and you remembered a time in your life and at the time I was going out a lot and you know had little black dresses with 10 mm. 20 pounds lighter and stilettos mm. um and so this is the piece and this is like sort of I got the mini Dior saddlebag because you know when you're going out for cocktails mm. and things like that you just want a small little bag but yeah this is something that I probably wouldn't wear today and I wouldn't wear it that often but you know at the time I wore it every day and every night and it was just like a piece that I look at now and I just remember being 22 and you know really thin and like just out all the time and it was just like a really good time in my life and, and it just you know I'll never give this bag away just because it's so pretty and it was just you know sort of like captured a moment in my life that was you know truly special to me anyway and it was just um I look back and I just remember that and so you know and during those times I think it's important to kind of buy those statement handbags that are trendy of the moment if it's a time in your life where you know you want to sort of remember it's, it's, it's a piece of memorabilia so this little bag sort of is my nostalgic purchase mm. so that's just sort of like a selection of handbags and just for me my, I mean the only word of advice is to always be looking um to be generous you know if you've got a good handbag collection you definitely need to be lending it out to your friends <laughs> um and just to you know if if some it, it, the bag will speak to you, that's just all I have to say. Like every bag that I've ever bought, I love it. I've never had to think twice about. So, anyways, that's my little bag collection. So back to Tom's. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> Lulu. We're probably gonna do another couple of videos together. Um, I think we're gonna do a shoe video next. So yeah, watch out for Lulu, who's gonna be back soon. Thanks, and um, yeah, tune in again soon. Thanks. Bye.